This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan with your host, Nancy Smitham, and get the latest from Alpena Community College with Dr. Don McMaster. And now, today's Talk of the Town. Good morning and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Nancy Smitham. My first guest today is Stephanie Gandula from Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary. Hi, Stephanie. Hello, Nancy. You have been so busy. Summer um, didn't <laughs> morphed into winter and winter into spring and you right. haven't slowed down. I know and here we are ready to launch right into the season and get out into the sanctuary and explore those shipwrecks but you're right it's been a, a with film festival and all of our education programs there's always something going on at the marine sanctuary for sure. And you're particularly excited about the Art in the Loft event. I am for sure this is a, a new thing we're doing uh, we've called it Art and Artifacts, and it's in partnership. One of our favorite things to do, of course, is to involve other community yes. members, other um, arts and cultural institutions. So we've got two uh, partners with this, Art in the Loft, of course, and then the Besser Museum for Natural History. And what we're going to do is it's based at Art in the Loft, and for $35, participants can come and spend um, April 5th, the evening with us. It's okay. uh, from 6 to 9 and we'll share some information about some um, artifacts from shipwrecks and so they'll be there and so we'll talk about the histories and then um, art in the loft instructors justin cooper was going to justin christensen cooper will be demonstrating how to illustrate these artifacts wow so there's a technique um, archaeologists do use archaeological illustration as another means of portraying these artifacts and learning from the artifacts rather than just photographs um, so it's an important part of our our job and it's also something you can um, be artistic with as well so we're not going to be locked into the precise documentation of the artifacts unless that's how you choose to do it but um, it, it can be a way to explore Great Lakes maritime history through art. So someone who wasn't really very artistic could still have fun and enjoy this class. Absolutely, because there's going to be, you know, the history and the, the stories from the stories that these artifacts tell, but also instruction about, I mean, you could be have no, no art background at all and still learn something and still enjoy. April 5th, then it's $35. How many people can we have in the class? You know, I'm actually not sure. We just launched this program, okay. and I think... But they better get their reservations in. They really better get their reservations yes. in, because it's not going to be unlimited for sure. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to depend on the resources and everything. Um, but it's going to be a fun night. I'm excited for it. There'll be wine and beer available for sale and some light snacks as well. And then the proceeds um, will go towards, be split between the three partners. So Art in the Loft, the Besser Museum, and the Marine Sanctuary. Perfect. Yes. Sounds like a fun night. Next... Then we also have that very same week, um, April 5th and 6th, so spring break for the community, will be the shark, take a bite out of spring break with yes. our shark programs. And those, this, we've been doing this for a couple years now, and they, they fill up fast. In fact, there's the, the older age group, there's two age groups, and um, one is age 5 to 6, and one is age 7 to 9. Okay. The 7 to 9 is nearly full, um, and there's about 10 spots left in the 5 to 6 age group. Okay. And those are $25 each is all, and it's a either a morning program or an afternoon program, but a great way for, for young people to enjoy spring break, but also learn something. Okay, what else is happening? Oh my goodness, and then we have launched, and I think we've talked about this before, but the cool thing about our lecture series and our cinema series is there's always a new topic yes. to discuss. So coming up um, on March 29th is our next lecture, and it's called Crossroads of Tragedy, and okay. it's all about the shipwrecks in the Straits of Mackinac. Ooh. So we have uh, Brian Jeske, who is the registrar for Mackinac Historic State Parks, is traveling down to Alpena, and he's going to share his expertise on a number of the shipwrecks up there. And then we have, uh, on April 12th, we have our next film program, which of course is free, and all of these lectures and films are free and open to the public. And the, the April 12th film program is in partnership with the MSU Science Festival. Ooh. And this is something, we started this partnership last year with a, with a program, Nights at the Museum, they call it. And the MSU Science Festival, Michigan State University, has done an amazing job of launching April as this statewide science events. I mean, there's dozens and dozens of events all across the state. We're participating with our um, a film series that explore all the National Marine Sanctuaries. So you come at 7 o'clock, and there'll be 
it's kind of like a mini film festival. So there'll be lots and lots of films all about the 14 um, National Marine Sanctuary sites. Wow. And now where can someone get the list? Because it's quite a list. It is a huge list. <laughs> yes. A lot of fun to put together and a lot of different topics, too. Of course, a lot of them are about shipwrecks. Sure. But we've got a lot of science, um, all sorts of different things. And you can find this at thunderbayfriends.org. Okay. okay. Um, so the Friends website, which is looking great. It's, it's getting updated and it looks really good. Lots of information there at Thunder Bay Friends. And, of course, on our thunderbay.noaa gov site which um, has our, our public calendar and all the events and if, if you can believe it I mean we have you know 12 lectures 12 oh. films but we also have other programs that are being added throughout the year um, lots of lots of ways to participate in in the Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary and you're gearing up for the summer season absolutely so that's coming up for sure um, already booking classroom cruises okay. on the glass bottom boat yes of course, which is so exciting. You know what's neat to see is we have a lot of repeat visitors. Oh, yes. Um, I mean, we've been out on the boat many, yes. many times. Yes. We know that it doesn't get yes. old. But um, we have schools from Petoskey, for example, that this one teacher brings her second grade class every single year. Terrific. Yeah, so we're booking those. Um, lots of neat programs coming up for the Glass Bottom Boat. Uh, so stay tuned for some specialty cruises. And, okay. and we are, we are going to be launching a um, free get into your sanctuary weekend so stay Ooh, tuned for that yes we've done that before where open it up to the community and um, first come first serve yes. for tickets on on the glass bottom boat so we want everybody to get a chance to get into their sanctuary and experience the the history that's out there and the sanctuary store is out there that's right stop by for some unique um, and different ideas and gift items for sure and i'm glad you brought that up actually because we're just launching our zero waste week Ooh. and that is in partnership with um, NOAA Education. So across the country, um, NOAA Education has this uh, program for students and scout groups that they can sign up for this Zero Waste Week and, and share their program that they're doing in their individual communities and how they're working to reduce waste in their community, to recycle, to be smart about consumption. And so back to the Sanctuary Store, which I'm glad you brought up, we have some really cool um, reusable you know even reusable water bottles some glass straws so you're not using the single-use plastic straws um, bamboo uh, you know utensils that you can throw in your your satchel and take with you some great gift ideas and also very useful items to minimize your your waste as well when I think about waste I just always go back to the day you brought in the contents of that albatross's <laughs> stomach and I yeah. think that was in the ocean and albatross ate that stuff it was horrible yeah it's it's pretty serious stuff out there the the hopeful thing is that even here in Alpena, you know, in the middle of the Great Lakes, in the middle of the country, we can do things that affect, yes. affect that. And the students yes. are champions, and they're the ones really leading the charge. Yeah, very true. Mm -hmm. Stephanie, we're out of time. I want okay. to thank you very much for being here. I look forward to talking to you next month. Thank you very much, Nancy. Thank you. I'll be right back with Dr. Don McMaster following these messages. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Dr. Don McMaster, president of Alpena Community College, and I'm pleased to have as our guest this morning Nancy Sea, Dean of Students, Director of the Huron Shores Campus. Good morning, Dr. Duncan mm. McMaster. <laughs> Cindy DeRocher, uh, Director of Student Life and Campus Housing. Good morning. Welcome to you both. Thank you. I saw something this week that I just want uh, the viewers out there to know about. I thought it was a really neat thing, and I give you folks credit for it preemptively before we start. But what it was was a series of focus groups with our students. and. Uh, if you would explain um, what it was, and then we can work backward from uh, you know how it came to be and what we learned. Okay. Well, first of all, the the third member of our team that's missing is Mike Colleen. You know, and, and without Mike and Cindy, it wouldn't have happened. Um, how it came about was Mike Colleen, myself, and our VP of Instruction Deb Bayer went down to a Guided Pathways conference, and um, Guided Pathways is a, a vehicle by which um, we want to get our students onto our college campus, get them uh, oriented, get them advised, get them on their way, and then with a goal in sight. We find that if a student has a, a goal or an end game, they're more likely to, to stay with us and, and be successful. So anyhow, as a result of that conference, we came away with the idea of a focus group. Let's find out what we're doing well, where we need to improve. And so lo and behold, we scheduled three groups. Uh, one uh, group met at 11, another at 2, and another at 4. So we could accommodate a myriad of students with their schedules and, and whatnot. 
Mm -hmm. um, Cindy, what, what would you say? You kind of well, we reached out together. Yeah, we reached out to the faculty and asked them to nominate some students, and so we could start with that pool of students. Uh, we targeted for the traditional student, the non-traditional student, the um, tech students, so we could get a nice range of students. So we got that pulled together, mm -hmm. and. Um, and by and large, they showed up. <laughs> they sure did. They you, did. You, they you did. did ply them with Jimmy John sandwiches. <laughs> yes, and there, thank but, you to Jimmy John's. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> but how did you come up with the questions? And I sat in on some of it, and it was just fascinating to me. Go ahead. Well, I think we sat down and we were like, "What? What do we want to know?" And mm -hmm. we, you know, we wanted to hear back what their feedback was from our admissions process, our orientation process. How difficult it was, how you know how we could improve, what's it like to be a student there, what it's um, as far as activities, what they felt that culture was like, um, what they felt of our the value of our non-classroom things that fall mm -hmm. under student services, such like mm -hmm. the bookstore, the library, the mm -hmm. tutoring center. So we, those were That's how we, wonderful. So uh -huh. we were getting at some of the things that are uh, uh, integral uh -huh. to student success. And if uh -huh. they're done poorly, students don't succeed as well as they might. And if they're done very well, in kind of an under the radar way, they succeed. Uh -huh. And uh, we do our best. Go ahead. Yeah, what we learned, I, I have to say, is um, our orientation process is paramount. They loved it, um, no complaints. One student even mentioned that um, he, he had been a student pri in prior years without orientation. He didn't finish the semester. This time around, when he re-enrolled, he did, went through orientation, completely successful, and what an impact it had. The students know their advisor that day. They get to meet mm -hmm. them. They build that rapport. They figure out their schedule, uh, their whole program, basically, over the course of the next two years. They get to meet the Student Services Center staff, which tutoring and our workshops were huge. I mean, great positive uh, you know, uh, comments on that. And uh, that, that's huge. I, I, I can't say enough about our Student Services Center staff. They, they are there. They do a great job. Um, and so all that, and then, and then um, what, they get a tour of the campus. They, they get to meet. Um, other students and it was kind of cute um, one student said she was even too afraid to even walk in because she was a non-traditional student mm -hmm. but once she got in the building and got in her classes she looked around and she realized all age groups mesh well together nobody's treated differently or singled out yep. um, another thing I think that came across loud and clear was our level of instruction they they couldn't say enough good things about our instructors yeah. they, Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead, Cindy. I had to jump in on that point you made. I thought that came up a couple times that in, in two different scenarios, mm -hmm. we had a, a student who talked about being coming in as a um, dual enrolled student, so mm -hmm. as a high school student, and said, I felt like a student, not like a high school student. Yes, mm -hmm. I heard that. And, and both were on the same panel, and their heads were shaking that all, you know, they all felt like student. It didn't matter who they were, it was student. A college student. A college mm -hmm. student. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought that was a huge compliment mm -hmm. and uh, some really good feedback when you think about that. They had some very nice things just to, to say just about the overall quality of instruction and mm -hmm. the passion mm -hmm. of the instructors. And also the, the one piece I, I enjoyed quite a bit was the capacity of the instructors and the willingness to bring culture and the outside world into the classroom here mm -hmm. at Alpena because many of our students haven't had that experience mm -hmm. when they come to us mm -hmm. the first time. Yeah. Anything else that you heard that uh, you, um, you know, that stuck in your mind? They like our food pantry. <laughs> Very good, they really. Do, yes, they, they just wished it were advertised a little bit more. Okay. You know, and um, our student activities, yeah. they, they really like them, but wish we had more, right? Yeah, well, I think the thing, we heard some of the things that we already knew. Mm -hmm. um, and, and part of that is getting the information out there where they, they will see it and retain it. Because some of us that put the information out there, we know it's out there, but they're missing it. And so we were able to ask, you know, how, a little bit better questions of how are you receiving it, you know, through the email, Blackboard, 
the bulletin board and um, their feedback was kind of right at where we've already take some pro taken some proactive steps to mm -hmm. implement next year with the master activities calendar of all events and, mm -hmm. and outside of the classroom activities, so. Yeah, we have about 15 seconds left, so anything you want to uh, cap this with, either one of you? J just that we were so delighted it turned out so well. Yes. And, and, and the enthusiasm from our students, um, the, the comments, the concerns were all great. Um, it just helped us propel us further. Good deal. I, Cindy? Would, I would agree, yes. That's... Well, I would agree too. So thank you both for your efforts. Thank you, Mike, for your uh, great <laughs> <Yes>. Phil Donahue <laughs> impersonation. Yes, you did yes, great. Yes. Thank you folks for watching Talk of the Town and supporting Alpena Community College. We'll see you again next week. This has been Talk of the Town with your host, Nancy Smitham and Dr. Don McMaster. For a list of community events taking place in Northeast Michigan, please visit our website at wbkb11.com and click on our community link. This has been a Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation production.